Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've talked about the sale of used cars before, I think, maybe once or twice. And uh, Bruce sent me a story because he knew it would catch my attention. A Toronto man banned from selling cars in Ontario. They've actually told one guy, you cannot sell used cars anymore. You cannot sell cars anymore. Because he was apparently selling used cars that had issues. And he did it so often that they thought they should shut him down. Pat Ferran of CTV News wrote the story. The Toronto man who used to work in the automotive industry doesn't anymore. He was selling used cars, but he's lost his appeal to become a car salesman again. The Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council, or OMVIC, alleged that the man from Toronto used forged documents. He bought cars written off by insurance companies as totaled, and he operated as an illegal, unlicensed dealer. And so there's several things going on there. We'll get to all of them. OMVIC said he sold these vehicles to unsuspecting buyers and also leased them to Uber and Lyft drivers who were unaware of their condition. The cars had been written off as total losses by insurance companies, but it's alleged they were purchased at salvage auctions. He fixed them up enough to make them drivable and sold them to buyers with fake paperwork. So there are some people right now who are typing mid-sentence and they're about to hit enter and they realize, oh, he just answered my question. (laughs) Because you can buy a salvage vehicle and you can fix it and make it drivable again and possibly get it back on the road as rebuilt salvage. At least in America, you can. But the point here is they're alleging he used fake paperwork so that people wouldn't know the true histories of the cars. And that's the problem. That would be out-and-out fraud, among other things. So John Carmichael is the CEO of OMVIC. He says he certainly can't sell a car legally in Ontario today. This is the type of person we do not want in the automotive industry in Ontario. Omvik said the man had many past infractions that should not allow him to return to selling cars. So it's not just one occasion. There are multiple complaints where consumers purchased vehicles that were unsafe, had been in accidents where the mechanical condition was not disclosed. Omvik said there are 40,000 registered car sales staff in the province, and this man ain't one of them. (laughs) When Omvik denied the man a chance... To have his license reinstated, he appealed that to Ontario's License Appeal Tribunal, and he lost. So Omvik uh, wins that one. The man's not allowed to sell cars in Ontario. Now, Pat Foran points out that when you're buying a used car for yourself, you should probably uh, get a used information package from Ontario's Transportation Ministry, if you're in Ontario, and get a Carfax history report. Understanding, of course, those things are not always comprehensive. They do miss stuff. Buyers should also look for signs of wear or accident damage and have the car checked by your own mechanic. Once a vehicle's up on a hoist, you spot all kinds of stuff. And many vehicles, especially rebuilt salvage, they straighten them out to look good as you walk around them. You get underneath the car and you discover all kinds of crazy stuff. All kinds of crazy stuff once you're underneath it looking up. So that's the key. If you do buy from an OMVIC registered dealer and you feel you've been deceived, you can apply to a compensation fund that OMVIC has, which can pay a car buyer up to $45,000 in compensation. Now, in the U.S., car dealers are often bonded. The question is whether you can get that bond or not. Usually it requires you to get a judgment against them, but the bond is often there. And I've I've actually known attorneys, uh, and, and I've gone after bonds myself, but you know, you, you get a judgment against the dealership and you go, huh, so what? Try and collect it. (laughs) Okay. We'll get your bond. The question is whether the bond is enough or not. Uh, as for the former salesman, uh, he is barred from selling cars right now, but he can reapply in the future to try to get a license to sell cars for the time being. No, he can't. What he'll, well, I hate to give him ideas, (laughs) but I wouldn't be surprised if what happens now is, suddenly somebody starts selling cars in Ontario. That's not this man, but someone he knows. And instead of having straw purchasers, you got straw sellers. And that happens also. Uh, It's another form of curb stoning, where if I can't legally sell a car, I have my friend get it, we fix it up, and then my friend sells the car. And then they get a little slice for their involvement. Uh, But to get licensed in Ontario, he would have to show that he's changed and can be trusted to sell vehicles in the province. Now, this raises a variety of questions, not the least of which is, who needs a license to sell cars? And, well, in Michigan, I can tell you, the law states that if you are in the business of buying, selling, brokering, leasing, or dealing in vehicles of a type required to be titled, you need a dealer license. 
So again, if you are in the business of buying, selling, brokering, leasing, or dealing in vehicles that need to be titled, you need a dealer license. So then what does in the business mean? In the business. If you buy and sell one car, are you in the business? If you buy and sell 10 cars, are you in the business? Well, there is a rebuttable presumption that a person who, in a 12-month period, buys and sells, exchanges, brokers, leases, or deals in five or more vehicles, okay, is engaged in the business of a dealer. So if you buy and sell five vehicles in one 12-month period, you technically are a dealer, which means that you would need a license. And I know many people who buy and sell cars as a hobby who are not licensed and nothing happens. And I'm just the lawyer here to tell you the law is on the books. I did a video a long time ago about curb stoning and I also wrote some articles about it. I got some very, very angry emails. And I got an angry email from a guy who said, Steve, I can't afford to become licensed. It costs too much. And he described, and it is, it is there's a process you got to go through, including you got to get the bond I talked about earlier. And he also said, and if I had to do all the things that dealers are required to do, he said, I wouldn't make any money. He goes, I don't make enough money, you know, flipping the cars that way, the way I flip cars. And if I were to do it the way dealers do it, I wouldn't make money. And the dealers would point out <laughs> that they became dealers to do it right. And so they're buying and selling cars legally. And it costs a little more to do it that way. But, you know, the state believes that having the licensure in place and overseeing these entities helps the public in general. So, you know, I've had people call my office before and say, I bought a car from a guy in front of his house. And uh, here's the documents, and the documents show they bought it from a dealer. And I say, what? And, and I've also, you know, all kinds of other variations on these crazy things that happen. And I've also seen it before where somebody's buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, and they're not a licensed dealer. And that person who's not licensed hasn't got a bond. And do you want to go chase an individual for something? So there's, there's a whole bunch of different variations on how the curb stoning thing works with straw man buyers, straw man sellers straw everywhere. But if you buy, deal in, trade, sell, lease, whatever, five or more vehicles a year, technically you need to be licensed in Michigan. And most states have got a threshold right around there. I've, I've heard lower numbers. I've heard higher numbers. But five-ish seems to be what it is. So, you know, we, we all know that there are people out there who do that without becoming licensed. But, you know, Something may or may not happen to them. That's not my job. My job is to tell you what the law is. But as of right now, there's a man, one guy <laughs> in Toronto. He can do anything he wants in Canada except sell cars. He cannot sell cars. That's because he was buying wrecked vehicles at auction, fixing them up a little bit, and then using fake paperwork to sell them, which, of course, allowed him to make more money. And, of course, it put people in really junky cars they didn't know about. So Toronto man banned from selling cars in Ontario. Pat Foran wrote it for CTV News. Bruce sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Conquer your fears by facing them. If you retreat, they will loom larger in your life.